RBS Stitches Toxic Asset Insurance. Uh, with me to discuss this story is uh, Reuters Breaking Views Assistant Editor Chris Hughes. Uh, it's a step in the right direction. It's going to save them £800 million a year, but they've got a long, long way to go to get out from state ownership, haven't they? Yeah, well, look, I mean, you don't really want to keep paying an insurance policy when actually the risk that you're um, insuring against has, uh, has gone down. And that's sort of the situation that, um, that RBS was in. It, was, it bought this toxic asset insurance policy from the, the UK government uh, in the depths of the crisis, right in the trough of the crisis back in uh, the first quarter of 2009. Um, now, let's not be under any illusion that the UK economy is sort of off to the races. I mean, it's, things are still pretty bad, but not as bad uh, as was um, feared back then mm -hmm. in terms of mm -hmm. arm against scenario. So it doesn't really need this. So it's saving money. Um, yep. But the question is, kind of, where does this fit into the well, overall well, what, strategy? What next? Because, of course, this is just one of several obstacles, yeah. if you like, or, or, or hurdles that, that they need to to put to one side. Yeah, absolutely. Getting out of this means that you've got a bank that is a bit more, a bit more normal, uh, which means that it could then be, uh, the government could sell down its 82% stake to the market, which it clearly wants to do at some point. Uh, but you don't yet have uh, an entity which is really compelling for, uh, for stock market investors to, mm. to buy into in, in, in a big way. So the way we're putting it is that the prospectus for this share sale is getting a bit easier to write. Um, and but, it's but it's clear, still it's still not particularly it, compelling. No, is it? it's clear that the government, both the government and management, are sort of on the same page in terms of m trying to move forward with the sale. Clearly, the government actually wants to get this done within, you know, within its current mm. uh, within the, with, within the parliament. So, which means before the next election in 2015. The trouble is, you've still got question marks over what RBS really is going to look like in uh, over the medium to long term. For example, in investment banking and in its international businesses in the US. I mean, what is it going to stay in the US? It's got this big exposure through Citizens Bank. The, the investment bank has been shrunk down. It's now a sort of it's a, it's a fixed income shop. They've got out of advisory. But is it really making adequate returns? No. I mean, should they stay in that? Should they fix it? You know, there's yeah. some big strategic questions before they can present to the market you know, a clear bank with a clear strategy Which where people can be? go, well, I mean, I think it's going to be at least another year, year and a half before they can really start, you know, putting that prospectus together and saying, well, look, this is what we are, this is what the strategy is, you know, either we're in investment banking and it's, and it's, and it's this limited focus on fixed income or actually, you know what, we're going to get out of that too, we're going to be a pure retail bank, yep. and whether they're going to be a pure retail bank focused on the UK or whether they're still going to maintain this international exposure built up through the boom years, you know, it's going to be a good 18 months thing before they can answer those questions. Okay, Chris, many thanks for that. That's uh, it for now. My thanks to Chris Hughes. For more Agenda Setting Insight, do watch our US show every day, 12.30 Eastern, 17.30 BST. I'm Axel Threlfall. This is Reuters.